Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks and welcome to some brand new RPG Let's Play. Sneaked up on me a little bit this one, Pillars of Eternity, which has apparently been a massive hit on PC and it's just been brought to the PS4 and I think Xbox One as well. So my headphones down, I feel like I'm screaming at everyone. So I played the first hour of this last night to get a feel for it. I didn't want to jump straight into a Let's Play because with these sorts of RPGs you can look a bit of a fool if you don't know what you're doing. So, if you're looking for a bit of The Witcher or, you know, that sort of first or third person type RPG, this is not it. This is down the ilk of Baldur's Gate, which it's referred to, well, compared to an awful lot. So, and Divinity Original Sin, that sort of stuff, this is very of that ilk. And it's been getting really high praise across the board, nine, nine out of tens and all sorts. So I thought, let's get it, and let's get it on the channel and quick. So, I'm going to crack straight in. And now, when I played it last night, I did the first hour, so everything after the first hour of this is going to be new to me as well. And I did it on easy, and I found it a bit easy. But it did say, when I read up on it, that it is particularly difficult, even on normal. So, we're going to give it a go on normal. Uh, the normal difficulty requires strategy and efficiency, but, no, uh, but forgives a few mistakes in combat. It is not recommended for newcomers to real-time party-based RPGs. So, uh, I think I've done a bit. If we struggle, we might have to move back to easy. <laughs> but we'll see how we go. Certainly, I found easy quite easy, but I didn't get to any major boss fights or anything. So, we'll go normal. You get that? Yeah. I'm not going to rush this, folks. I'm going to take you through all the creation of character and such like. So, if you're not really interested in all the character creation and all seeing all the menu -y type bits, then you might want to scoot forward on the video. I might make this first segment slightly longer than normal, try and get a lot in if we can. I'm going to accept all of that. The expert mode and the trial of iron, obviously for seasoned performers, which we're not going to do. Uh, this trial of iron, I think you only get one save, and if you die, it's game over, basically. You start all over again. Harsh. Beautiful music in this game. A really, really beautiful world they've created. All done on a fundraiser campaign, I believe. I shall attempt to speak where appropriate. There are elements of this game where it's only text, so I'll try and read that out as best I can. Elements where it's read out by the characters. There's a lot of descriptive text in it, so we'll try and find a good balance of me not reading everything, but at least giving you a feel for what's going on. I'm not the best narrator in the world, but we'll see how we go. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. All right character time so I've got a plan here and I'll try and take you through as best I can what's going on so you can see at the top we've got sex race class attributes culture appearance voice there's nothing out of the ordinary here if you're used to if you're used to RPGs and creating characters there's not a huge amount here you won't have come across already but it is pretty in-depth and quite cool the only thing that bugged me uh, I'm gonna go for the same character I created last night just so that we can not spend too much time in here so I know what I'm doing so we're gonna go for mail and then you hit R1 and it takes you to the type of race you want them to be so you've got human Umawa I think we pronounce that maybe Dwarf. 
elf. Orlan. I was quite interested in that one because it's not something I've come across before. You can spin these characters around. Godlike. Almost kin Kingdoms of Amalur type elfy type stuff going on there. So, Amor, which is probably, I don't know, closer to maybe... Well, it's not a lizard type, is it? No. So they haven't gone for a lizardy creature and they haven't gone for... You know, the bog standards that you'll find in maybe the Bethesda's. So they've got a few characters in there that are, are new. And each of them have, you know, for example, the Orlan's got Resolve plus one over at the right-hand side there. Might minus one. So there's a, a deficit to him. Perception plus two. And all of these things are important, depending on what you are in the, the mix of the party. It's a party RPG, this, turn-based. You do, you do get to control every member of the party as well. You can jump between them all. all my, in fact, it, it reminds me a lot of, of Dragon Age Origins as far as that goes. And even Wasteland 2, which we did a bit of on the channel. Right, we're going human. And we're going to go with... Now, the human gives us what? He gives us a resolve of plus one and a might of plus one. So we're, we're looking at a swashbuckling hero here, people. That's what we're looking at. Uh, okay, so this is mainly a sort of race type thing. Ocean, Nordic, all that sort of stuff. Savannah folk. Again, I think, to be honest, I think each of these gave us the same. So the fighting spirit, once per encounter, five seconds after being reduced below 50% endurance, folk temporarily gain bonuses to accuracy and damage. If you change that, it seems to be the same on each one. So I think the fact that we're human doesn't seem, it seems to be the same all around, which is a bit strange. Just a different historic background. But uh, anyway, I went meadow folk. All right, and then we get more perks of the job here, depending on what we pick. Oh, now, hang on, which one did I go for? Uh, I went for, I kept it, I kept it with fighter, which gives us athletics plus one, law plus one, survival plus one, Endurance is very high. 42 plus 14. Health five times endurance, which is high. Accuracy 30 plus three is very high and deflection is very high. So yeah, but you also have uh, the Barbarian. I'll, I'll run through these so you can see them all. Gives you a different kit for each one. Chanter. And you'll notice that these are either single-handed in two hands or double-handed weapons, two-handed weapons type folks. And their stats will match that. Druid. Not sure what Cypher is when it's at home. Fighter's got the best kit off the bat by the looks of him. The Monk. Yeah, Monk's got a bit of stealth going on. But you can add to all of those features anyway, but obviously it's, it's, it's a... A boost start for the ones that you decide to go with. Paladin, priest. The law is quite an interesting one because I got in the the fighter has a plus two law, I think. And we got into a, a conversation with someone and it, it basically we were sort of outdoing them with our knowledge which was quite cool so it had a direct impact on what would happen in that set situation talking to someone uh ranger and rogue the rogue's quite cool isn't double daggers as always and i'm pretty sure their dexterity will be high i would have called it in this stealth plus one mechanics plus two mechanics lets you do trap undo traps and all that sort of stuff And the wizard. Nice. Alright. But we're going to go fighter, as I did last night. Because I'm a bit boring that way. I always seem to go warrior. And we're going to take... Knockdown. Uh, knockdown basically barges the character that you're fighting over onto the ground. Just gives you more time to get your next moves in. So... You get two per encounter. Melee only. Speed is average. <clears throat> all sorts of other things in there. Crush. 
accuracy deflection plus 20% damage on the user. So you get perks as you use it as well, which is quite cool. And the Discipline Barrage, a uh, fighter intensely focuses on his or her training, significantly raising accuracy for a short amount of time. Now I guess that's uh, maybe more useful to a bow person, really. But, no, uh, Jetta's got a sword thing on it. Anyway, we'll go for Knockdown. You'll notice before I picked that, we had one remaining point there, so... Okay, now I need to remember what I did here. Now I'm pretty sure I took Might and Constitution up to 15. I took a Resolve. What was Resolve again? Resolve reflects a character's internal drive, determination, fearlessness and the emotional intensity they can protect, project to others. It can be useful for mental intimidation, leadership and convincing performances. In combat, it helps characters maintain concentration and contributes to the will and deflection defences. Important chiz. Intellect represents characters logic reasoning what i do like about this is although some of these things are more beneficial to maybe someone with magics and stuff they do have a purpose to everybody um so the area of effect and duration and stuff will is still in there which will be big on wizards and stuff but i assume that you know the sword guy will have an area of effect move as well so they are still useful um so in combat, it contributes to the will, defense, and influences durations and areas of effect of all abilities and talents. So, and dexterity in combat, it affects the character's action speed, which is pretty useful to all characters, really. So not just... In dexterity, generally speaking, in most RPGs, is only good on a rogue, but in this game, it seems to be handy for everyone. Well, I don't know why at the bottom it says plus 0% action speed and 0%... Uh, 0... Oh, there you go. So I think we'll take the dexterity up. So we've got plus 3%. Plus 2. Reflex. I might take a couple of those as it happens. Perception is for spotting traps and all that stuff. And in combat, it contributes to accuracy and reflex. Uh, uh, the reflex defense and grants bonus to interrupt. So we've got four points left here. You started with 16. I'm going to take a perception. Which is plus three, plus one accuracy and plus two reflex. I'm going to take an intellect. Just so we've got a little bit of each. And I think we'll take a resolve. And an extra dexterity maybe. Bit of speed going on. I like the look of that, people. I like the look of that. Oh, I notice that's got a gold star and that's got a silver. I what that's about. Must be the... Is that our perks as a fighter, maybe? I think it is, isn't it? Next. Okay, so we get an extra perk here. Depending on... Now, I think he is by standard resolve plus one. Yeah, so it just changes the... Um, so it's all down to where you come from. It's quite interesting this bit as it happens. Uh, because it does change what sort of weapons you start out with and, and kit. That's quite smart, isn't it? Yeah, see now that's that's shifted to a two-handed that has, which I don't want. As is that. Spear and shield. The white that wins. Alright, I'm gonna stick with the Adaya. And I'm pretty sure I stuck with Aristocrat here, and we've got Law plus two, which is the thing I was saying was dead handy in that conversation. The others, uh, it doesn't change the picture, I don't think, it just changes the stat. So, Stealth plus one, Law plus one on Dissident, Hunter gets Stealth plus one, Survival plus one, Mercenary Athletics plus one, Law plus one, Clergyman Law two, it's the same, Colonist plus two, Survival, Stealth plus one, mechanics plus one on the drifter. 
Labour and Mechanics plus one Athletics plus one Merchant Law and Mechanics. And a slave gets Athletics and Survival. So there you are. Each of those. Now, this is an interesting one because I found this in another game, and I think it was Wasteland 2, that it's got preset portrait pictures for the on screen as to which character's fighting. And you can't change the portrait. It would be particularly useful to be able to take a picture of your character's face and use that as the portrait, but that is not a feature in these sort of games for some reason. There was a game that did that, and I think it was Dragon Age Origins. If I remember rightly. It actually takes a snapshot of your character's face and puts it there. It's the only one I've found that does it. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, let me get my character's kit right. Uh, I went with primary as... Uh, I think I went dark brown as it happens. And secondary I went for a bit of a tannish colour. Uh, I think it was that one. Or was it that one? Oh, I can't remember now. And they're too bright, aren't they? Yeah, we'll go with that, I think. Here, we had a little bit of brown going on, I think. So basically what I'm getting at here is I'm going to make that guy look like the guy in the picture <laughs> because I can't be bothered um, doing anything else because it just won't look right. So... We're going to go for facial hair. Give him a, find him a beard that looks fairly, there you go. Fairly similar. And a head. Ah, that's a good point, actually. I can't remember what head I went with. Hang on. Yeah, I think it was that one. There we go. Now the hair. Try and show you these off. <laughs> that would work for him, actually, if he was having a gel day, wouldn't it? That's probably about right, isn't it? Number, number 11. I think we've got a winner, people. I think that's a bit too wavy. Number 11, I think. That's the fella. And skin, I think, went a little bit darker. I mean, his royalty people, his nobility, would have been sat in the sun for some time. And we're good to go there. All right, yeah, let me just show you the portrait. So we're on number 23, just so we know how to get back to. But these are all the different ones you can use. I mean, you could go with a generic knight type one, I suppose. Knight, mage, blah. So, in theory, I mean, if I was playing this game, I'd probably try and make the characters that are in these pictures like I've just done. That's her out of Avatar, isn't it? In fact, no, she's more like the one out of Avatar, but blue. Just rattling through these for you people so you can see them. I mean, there's an immense amount of customization if you want to do it, but it's just disappointing you can't then take a picture of the character. Dwarves and elves. Back to the beginning again. Onward. And we'll pick a voice. We've got several to choose yeah. from here. Now I am the leader of the group. Yeah! Steady does it. Hmm? I'll lead the way. Charge! Yeah, I went for Noble, as it was a noble moment. To whispers had. and shadows. Hmm? Huh? 
I've never seen one like that before. Okay. And we'll go with the same name, I think. Sir Fluffy Pants was my original name. <laughs> Not really. Susander. Do you want to finish character creation? I think so. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. The area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Alrighty. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. Oh, that's good to know. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. All right. Barfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. So we've got some options here, and uh, where would I find these berries? They grow berries? on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. All right, so you've got your conversation options down here, and you can you can just leave if you want to, but you can Nothing carry on. you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and Arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Inguithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. And is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. Uh, what kind of weather do they get here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. And what are these huge rocks coming up from the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The sole butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. All right, let's leave and see what we can get berries and water. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travellers, resting his eyes at the length on a sturdy, armour-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow, because she's hard. Kalisha. 
Kalisha. Kalisha, wake up, woman. The, the woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. Right out. No promises. That's what nice. kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beewick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Alrighty, we're off. You heard the Seems man. Let's get going there. before you keel over. Okay, so we've got two people in the party now. We've got Das Lady and us. And she's, well, she looks to be a... Single, uh, single, single-handed weapon in each hand. Whereas we've got a shield and a single-handed weapon. But I guess you can. Oh, and the glory of this game, weapon sets. People, the one thing I moaned the taken out of Dragon Age Inquisition that was in Dragon Age Origins. So you can move together, or you can hit the bumper button and just take one character off to do something, and then hit double bumpers to bring them back together. It's just dead easy. And here's a really cool feature. If you get fed up wandering about over the same areas, you hit the uh, up, I think, is it? Oh, no, that's camera. Uh, you go into hit right D-pad, and you get fast movement. So you can scoot around places dead quick. Or you can go into, for whatever reason they've put this in, I don't know, but there's slow mode as well. And there is a few places where you've got traps and stuff that you don't want to stumble into, so it is possibly quite handy. And you've also got, I don't know if it'll let me do it yet without a tutorial happening yet, but uh, you can go into, Let's keep quiet. there you go, stealth mode. Try and sneak up on stuff just by clicking the left stick. I'll have so, open in no time. Can't open that. Change character, can she open it? No. Okay, so it needs mechanic. And it needs lock picks, and we don't have either, so we can't go into that at the minute. You can talk to go characters on, then, before it gets too dark. So see, again, some of them have a, a voice actor, some of them just have text. So the best thing we can do, hang on. Yeah, interacting with people, just hitting X. Anyone needs support? This is the shop fellow, which I've clicked on by mistake. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. See, I, what I like about this is it does give like little descriptions of what they're doing. You know, it's so he said what he says, but just before it, he shakes his head and laughs when he notices you, and then after he's spoken, he he scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It covers it with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. So, I mean, it, it's kind of, to some people, that'll be pointless text, but this is a really descriptive story say, tale. It's something that they really raved I've about. some basic travelling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. I mean, almost like reading a book, but with the interaction, which is... And let's see what you got. Well, you can speak to him, of course, who are you? Originally from the Adir Empire, but I've been trying to hey, establish a new business out here. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? Indeed. We might as well try. My thoughts Something exactly. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Okay, so tell me it's about the Ada Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Uh, why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Ceres. <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. He shrugs. You see, the, the, the only bit I don't understand is um, 
like there's more text from him there in a sp in speaking, but it's not actually read out. Uh, Drywood is a former ADA colony, so it seemed like a good place to start. And as much as I admire Ridkin's work ethic, it always stuck me as a little fanatical. Uh, sounds reasonable enough. Let's see what you got. So we'll show you the shop here. So you get a little tutorial each time you go in. Lots of swords and... So you can go through swords, armour and blah up at the top here. Now at the moment, the nice thing is it immediately tells you when you hover on it what you've got equipped and what it is you're on. And at the moment, uh, and we want to stick with our character's got medium armor on, and that's a heavy armor, so we're not going to move to that. And the light armor, and medium armor is a DR of six. Um, it's copper coins we're using here as well, which is what the CP is. Copper pennies, is it? Copper pennies, I think they're called. And medium armor and light armor. So we don't really need any of that at the moment. Not sure why recovery speed is so. I think the heavier the gear is, the recovery speed is uh, less. So we're more we're okay at the minute because we've uh, although there's nothing in the menu on our side, we have actually got kit on, as it's telling us there. I think it only shows you what you're not wearing in these particular segments. And retrain character. Not sure what that's all about. It will cost 125 to retrain. All right, so you can actually respect them. I assume that's what it means. We don't have enough money to do so. That's fine because we don't want to anyway. All oh, right, there is a 125 it costs. It does tell you that? I can't see it. That that pink in the top left. Right. Uh, double tap and get her with us again. Right, let's go and investigate a bit. So, oh, what's he doing? So you can hold down the X button and then immediately go to whoever it is you want to go to or what you want to go to and then take all. Which is quite a cool way of not having to run around all over the shop in an immediate area. Light armor, lock picks. We need those. I did find that I got over encumbered quite quickly in this game. Uh, chest we couldn't get into. I think it needs three lock picks. That chest, which is why we weren't in it. These tall glass green pillars appear as if they have sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets shadows dancing within. So it's a game that it's not afraid to take its time. You know, you're not running around swinging your all over the place, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Proper old style turn based party RPG, this is. Uh, the camera, yeah, you can zoom in and out. Better perspective on things. We've already done that, here we have. It's well worth looking around as well because you do pick up plenty of items that are helpful. Now, that's interesting because the horse shines green as if we can use it, but it doesn't seem to let us pick one out. I did try this last night and it must be something for later, don't I? The fallen tree doesn't budge. Sap oozes from the jagged Not wound looking of its trunk. To trying to lift that thing tomorrow. Alright. Glad she's got a torch. Let's see what we're doing. 
just go further in, shall we? I do know where I'm going, but I am looking at every corner, because I, I, we need all the bits I picked up last night, otherwise we're going to find ourselves a bit short, people. Pressing on or R1, yes, we know that. Just talk to you through that. Bringing party members together. To show you the map, it's one of those that just, uh, if you haven't been there yet, obviously it's black, but it opens up as you start. Moving around. Hey, it's a deer. Oh, hello. So, actually, that medium armor. I can only assume that DR is the damage resistance, that's what it'll be. Uh, so the damage resistance is less, but the recovery speed is better, so it's a balance, isn't it? But we've got lockpicks as well, so we're going to take those. And we'll look at what this... Uh... The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple uh, simple linen clothing. Beautiful water. Is it the beautiful paper? Alright. Um trying to remember what I did first. That's where we've come from up there. Let's go over here. This is recent. Not good. Yeah, okay. Hang on. We're going to come back to this bit because I think that triggers what's going on. Just check around the corners a bit. I could have sworn there was a conversation before all that happened. The sound effects are beautiful. I've got my new turtle beaches on. Turn them up a bit, actually. Oh, there he is. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Uh, be like that, then. Let's check by those outcroppings. All right. First battle. Okay, so it's turn-based and... It automatically pauses on the fight. So effectively you do the same in battle as you do in general moving around. You can pick the character you want to use by using the bumper buttons. And you can use your right trigger to bring up the moves that you've got. I haven't populated much of this yet. So we'll get more to do with all of this as we go. There's another radial menu which gives you other stuff you can use as well. But this seems to be the main battle one. Whoops. Alright, so we're going to knock it down. And with her we'll just go for straightforward attack I think. Unpause it. There we go, knocked it to the floor. He did. And there you go, and that's the long and the short of it. So effectively you're interjecting with moves and telling them what you want them to do in battle. You're not this smashing and mashing sticks. That's the spring berry we were looking for. You're the one who's supposed to be from some big shot noble family, that true? Uh, that's right. Royal blood runs through my veins, my darling. Yeah, how's it supposed... Uh, how is it you happen to come here? 
Someone tried to poison me. Hazard of the lifestyle, I suppose. You had to expect it was a possibility no matter how much you didn't want it to be that way. Celicia breathes in her uh, breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Redrick Zoffer makes a girl think I'll give him that. You here to settle, like the rest of the lot? My accent's pretty good on her. I could go higher, but I won't I won't. <laughs> Hard offer to pass up. You won't find many others like it in these parts. Believe me, got some big plan in store. I know, you got, I think she's asking us, you got a big plan in store. I'm going to settle here. Redrick, well, Redrick pays well enough. Maybe we end up neighbours. Why are you here? Celicia sighs unevenly. Her eyes search the ground at her feet. Uh, my sister moved out here some time back. She sent a letter. She seemed worried, but that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. Haven't seen her in ages. Been doing guide work in Examitil. Sounds like a bloody drug. But I'd do anything for her. She's well, she's much a much better woman than me, so I'm here and we'll see. Just telling us about herself there. What can you tell us about Dyerwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be part of the Adair Empire. Broke off after the war some years back. The locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. All right, let's go. Find Sparful. I think what we'll do, actually, we'll just have a little say. Uh, interestingly, um, oh, hang on a minute, I've got two menus. All oh, right, that's my other game, presumably at the bottom. It's a nice quick save system as well, which is good. The path winds through a narrow canyon back the way you came. We shouldn't stray too far. Yeah, all right. Meaning, we can't. <laughs> but anyway, oh well, I will take some of that though. Admiths wort. I think if we go too far, she says something. Or maybe not. It does run on its own. Oh, hello. General radio menu, yeah. So that was the, the left trigger button. <clears throat> Access to inventory, map, journals, and other menus. So that was that one. You can tap it or you can hold it down. That's our inventory. And... Where's the map at? Where's the map at? There you go. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. You have gained an item. Full water skin that had added to the stash. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guys, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves towards you with a laboured breath. Sparful? Are you alright? Sparful's toe catches on a rock and he collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. It's a trap! Ambush! Alright, here we go. So, yeah, so I've already taken you through that. So we've got the right trigger menu which gives us our moves. So what we're going to do here is we'll get her to go for him with her knockdown. And we'll get... Yeah. 
Hello, yeah, sorry, that's my bad. And we'll get him to go with his knockdown on him. I'm going to take one each then, can't I? Yeah! Oh, nice. Not not the other guy down there, is she? Let's try it again. I do find the getting this on the guy sometimes a bit tricky. Nice, it's better. You do end up with a party of four, I think, at some point in this game. Though the most I had last night was three. Come on, we have to get back to camp. All right, let's pick up some loot first. Ooh, a bow. Let's just see if there's anything else kicking around. Some shrooms, people. Some shrooms for those party nights that we might have. No, why not? Bit of ale. Any more goodies? The only thing that's a little bit frustrating uh, is that you can't pan the camera around. That I've found anyway. I mean, you can zoom in and out, but you can't zoom around and about. Let's go in fast mode, shall we? Before we go, oh hello, fight! Three of them this time. So we're going to take the archer out for show. You can quickly target enemies by holding X and aiming with L and releasing it. Yeah, it's the same, same as, same as the main world movement. So if we hold down X, and you'll see a little arrow come up on the character, it points to wherever you want to point to. There, let go. Do the same with her. Let go. Interject with that, I think. Let's do it. Yeah, we're still doing right on normal, to be fair. I'm not finding it more that much more difficult than last night. Why is my guy not doing out? Hit him. Go on. Knock him down. I don't know why that knockdown's not working. I just used it, but it didn't work. Let's get her over to this guy. So it's when they're close together it's difficult because you can't pan the camera around. Right, you go sort him out. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Loot galore. Lady. More mushrooms. Alright, back to camp. I do like that fast mode. Let's 
Let's have a little save, I think. What I will quickly show you is... Uh, there you go, weapon sets. So if you go into main menu, into inventory, we've got weapon sets down here. And quick items as well, actually. We'll sort them out in a bit. We don't have much at the minute, so... So weapon set 2... And say we'll have our guy have a bow so when you're in a fight you can switch between the two there you go use that as a quick item as well I assume a beer can be a quick item I'm not sure what for though yeah it lights up see if you if it's, a, if it's that particular type of item it lights up quick item goes to light grey do it not sure what it's used for Change to her, and we could do the same with her with the bow as that happens. Let's see what she does with it. She might do her own thing. Cool. So in our menu now, if we go to there, you just one click of a button and he's got a bow on instead of the sword and shield. Bob on that. Nice! Oh my god. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travellers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Celicia puts the back of her left hand to her mouth, as if to ward away some poisonous vapour. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognise as Hayden. The last of your caravan left standing. No, not Hayden. There we go. So this is where I used law. I used the power of law, like the Jedi Force, against them. Uh, Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Right, so we've got all these options here, but it's telling us that we can use our law power here, law one. And we've got law three, I think, so we should be able to outlaw the man. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Okay, so we're going to stick with law. Which is, judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I am guessing you are worshippers of Galloway. If Galloway told you to stop protecting the ruins, would you? The man frowns and the motions of a s as if to swing his axe. Hayden winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head, intrigued, of course. But he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. How do you know? Because it's consistent with the beliefs... Or because it is what you were told. The man glares. It has always been known to my people. I see. And what of Galloway's edict? That weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength. You think Galloway would want some mouldy crumbling stones to survive long after their builders have turned to dust? The man's nostrils flare as he fumes. He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did, just not you personally. But why should that stop you from killing innocents? There you go. Distracted, the man's grip falters on his axe handle and he nearly fumbles it. Affording Hayden in the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. So we've given ourselves an advantage in the battle by outlawing him with our Jedi mind skills. And now we've got Hayden on our team as well. So we've got a party of three. Let's get Hayden doing something first. Hayden's got a different power. He's got a blinding strike. So... We're going to use that blinding strike on... Nobody seems to have a bow. So let's get him to do this guy. 
Main character's going to give down a knockdown. Let's lay the smack down on this guy's ass. And Celicia will do the same on the main fella. Let's go crazy, people. They are getting hammered. Be gone, barbarian beasts. Your enemy lies supine on the ground. Unable to rise, his companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but the sky above. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good, the gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I'm ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to steep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it, uh, it feels as though it is rending you apart within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across the chest and bow, 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 bow. Blimey, Steve. Across chest and bow. Odima's body stirs, and with great effort, he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open, he looks directly Get at inside. you. inside! Run! Run, mother bitches! Strain against a gale that threatens to pull you, pull you off, <laughs> of your feet. With every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hayden trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for Hayden and topples him onto the rocky ground. Restrained, Hayden lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you, despite the wind from your position, if you were to throw your weapon at the attacker, you would have a good chance of hitting your mark. So at this point we've got an option, we can throw our weapon or let him handle it himself. I'm going to throw our weapon, because it's told me I've got a good chance. Your aim is true and hit jars Hayden loose. Lurching to his feet, Hayden clambers up the base of the rocks. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it, securing his other hand and pull with waning strength. And it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hayden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. Whee! There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loose the, before you loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. I mean, it's an interesting way of doing it, all the text and, and reading, um, but I'm actually quite enjoying it because it's that whole book feel to it. How interesting that is to watch and listen to me reading it out, I have no idea. Was that? Yes, it was, Celicia. <laughs> a Beowick. Had to be. And we're lucky to be alive. Lucky to be alive, goddamn. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way, anyway. Let's get further inside. All right. So here we are, new area. Let's take fast off for now. Pan out a bit, I think. See what we're doing. A lower level of the ruins has been blocked off by fallen rubble. I 
that should be far enough. <sighs> but what now? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. What happened out there? Salisha shakes her head. Windstorm of some kind. They only get in air Glanfath. Not too many people live through them. So it's hard to know what's true. The Glanfathom word is, uh, word is Biowak. To them it's the God's way of raping the souls of the... <laughs> raping? <laughs> Steve. Reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours. Who attacked us? Glan Fathens. Those would be the hut dwellers Odima warned you about. Look to be fangs of Galloway, who are the twitchiest of the lot. They go ruin to ruin looking for fights with colonists. Poor Odima. I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. Uh, the Glanfathen said we trespassed in the ruins. I don't believe that. Odima would never allow it. But as much as the fangs are hotheads, Glanfathens don't attack without pre being provoked. Either they saw something and got the wrong idea, or... She glances down the passage beyond. Or there's looters in here with us. That's not something we need right now. Uh, what about everyone else in our caravan? Salisha's lips pressed together and her chin rumples. Her voice is faint. The wheel's got hold of them now. She looks up. God grant them better luck in the next lives. Uh, you don't seem too upset about all this. Uh, I don't know if that'll go down well. <laughs> Salisha looks you in the eye. A volatile current running beneath her voice. Maybe you just don't know me enough to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too. Seen worse and kept on walking because there's nothing else to be done and because there's other people you care about who still need you. Damn. Right, here we go. Let's crack on. Let's have a little save, actually, now we're on with it. Alright. A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs show through his scaly flesh, but you recognise it as a Zurip. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Alright, shall we tear it to pieces, or... Hey, it looks quite cute. We'll raise our arms and stand still. The creature cocks its head and approaches you, a soft clicking sound emanating from its back of its throat. <laughs> uh, the creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest. It steps back and resumes its defensive posture. Uh, it's okay. I won't hurt you. The Zurip recoils, fingers still wrapped slightly around its spear. The creature cocks its head and approaches you. A soft clicking sound emanated from the back of its throat. Yeah, we'll back away for now. I have, a pl I have a plan. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Uh, there we go. Shall we go rechts or links? Let's try links first. Someone else has here. been here. We should Let's move. See if they left anything useful behind. Yeah, I think we should find something useful as well. In fact, we're going to send this dude because he's got mad lockpicking skills. In case we need them. Mace one-handed. I think what I was doing last time was I was putting all the inventory in the same character as well, which didn't help matters. And camping supplies, yeah. So you can the way to get your health back easily is to camp and rest, which we'll do at some point soon. Shield there. Don't think there was anything else, was it, to look at in there? And that was it. Nice touch that, being able to. It, it kind of highlights immediately if there's anything in the area that needs to be looked at. 
Okay, so we don't want to go straight on because that's the spear guy. So we'll go up this way. Right. Pressing L3 enables scouting mode. It lets you move stealthily past enemies and discover hidden objects. All right, so with our stealthy dude... I'll be quiet. Those look at the tiles. Look suspicious. What are those Let's symbols? Let's be careful. Worth a look. Here we go. Now... What's it doing? So he's got mechanic, so he's able to disarm all of this stuff. Um, yeah. I did last night go around all of these and disarm them because it just because if you stand on them, bloody great fire comes out of them and burns everybody. I've not. I've yet to find an easier way of. Oh, I know. I know I don't. I thought there was a way of getting the thingy on. Yeah! No, that'll do. <laughs> now, the reason I did this last night wasn't because necessarily I had to. It was A, because yeah! it seemed the easiest way of not getting everybody bloody burned alive. And B, he gets XP every time he does it. Come back that way in a minute. That roundish symbol. Just like I'm the tiles. I'm sure I saw it on one of the tiles back there. Fire godlike requirements not met. Use a torch to light the brazier. All right, okay, nice. Nice. The mural must be ancient, yet the colours are still bright and vivid. It shows a procession of Engwithans from all the kith races. Amoa, Elven, or Land, Dwarf and Human. They walk among the pillars similar to the ones that span this chamber, each one topped with a flame. Just have a little savey savey. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Black ooze. Is that a global attack then if I do that? Let's try it. Oh, there's two of them. Very nice. What did I do there? Uh, 
No, it made a bit more hard work than that than I needed to. I just wish there was a way we could pan around, but anyway. Ooze plasma. Two-handed axe. Where'd that, that slime muck come from? Wall. Vicious and oily, this muck clings to anything it touches. Oh, hello. Vicious slick of something dark and tar-like runs down the walls. The shapes and bulge the shapes and bulges in the ooze suggest that something lies beneath it, but you can't tell what. All right, I don't I don't remember doing this last night. Use the water skin to clear off the ooze. Right. You rinse the ooze away, revealing an intricate relief of a man's face. The sunburst surroundings it has chipped away in places but the details of his head from the tight curls of the hair to the ridges of the pointed ears still showcase remarkable craftsmanship one eye socket is empty a gem fills the other all right well, if you find a gem we'll come back here then i've got a funny feeling that uh, we did find a gem in here last night let's just see how we got on Let's see how we get on and we can come back. You see? It's interesting, isn't it? There's anything else in here, I'm sure. I think lighting the pillars opened that door in the first place. Let's head up here where we took all the traps out. It's just a wall to the same place. does this from time to time. The camera just sticks. You have to click L2. Oh, hello. Right. Spiders. seem to get anything out of spiders, sadly. I think I this takes us ahead. back to the... See what's around the corner. No, maybe not. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. enemies look. You can see the red circles of them. Out of sight, can't do it. Now we can. So, I'm just going to try doing his other weapon set and see what happens. change weapon set in battle then. Oh no, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong menu. Oh. <laughs> nice. It means you can keep one person back, not being in the the midst of it all, which is quite cool.
Ooh. Let's have a look at that in a little second, that wall there. Something going on with that. I think we'll, uh... yeah, it's interesting this, because if you push the wall, despite the damage, the stones look heavy and solid. Oh, hello. You push the wall with your with all your might, but it doesn't give. Cr a crack runs along this wall from the floor to the ceiling. A light gust, a light gust of air passes through it. So let's use the so the the items we've picked up are allowing us to do stuff here. Whereas in the other room, we needed some sort of gem in order to activate it. We didn't have it. Whereas we've got the hammer and chisel that we've picked up from somewhere. So we'll use that. You set to work, the cracks lengthen and widen with your efforts, but the process is more taxing than you expected. Sweat beads, your forehead and your muscles begin to ache. Continue chiseling the wall. There we go. After several long moments, you begin to see light on the other side. With one final tap, several blocks of stone shift, then tumble loose, clearing a gap just wide enough to pass through. Yeah, so the hammer and chisel is now gone because we've used it. And it opens up another area. You can hold and open the tutorials by... There you go. When it pops up in the corner. Whoa. Okay. Hey, I can't use it. Oh, right, because it's got a bow on, that's why. Okay, so if you just unpause it without doing anything, they just attack, which is quite good. So if you want quick battles out of the way, that's pretty handy. Now, that meat might come in handy as it happens. Axe. Wait, do you hear that? No. Ah. Angwithin Relief Gem. Wonder if that'll come in handy for some it. There's also a tattered journal there. And a torch. Crossbow. Uh, and what's more powerful? Interestingly, you don't seem to have to pick up arrows in this game. Uh, 21 damage, 21 to 30 pierce damage. Accuracy versus deflection. Range 12 meters. Uh, crossbow looks more powerful, doesn't it? So if you see at the bottom left there, some of our characters' health's gone down. So we can use potions or we can do a campfire, which basically lets you rest and build your health back up. Something that Dragon Age lets you do as well as it happens. I'm going to try and see this dungeon through before we end this Let's Play. There you go. So we've now got another option here because we killed that creature. We've got Scolder Meat to give to it. You produce a piece of scalded meat from your pack and toss it into the floor. The Zurup's nostrils flare at the scent of fresh meat, and its eyes dart between you and the food. It creeps toward the, pr the prize, shoving the spear into your grip and snatching the meat with both hands at the last moment. Its gullet quivers as it devours the flesh in noisy jumps. The Zurup continues to gnaw. Right, so he's just... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, right, that's interesting, actually. So we got the spear then, did we? Okay, how do I get that little menu at the bottom to function? Didn't tell me that, did it? Oh, that's how you get the reticle up. Let's try to remember how to get that thing up without... There you go. So if you use triangle, you can pick that up and highlight anything just manually. What I'm trying to do is get that journal and stuff to open in the bottom right-hand corner. or use the scroll feature, but I can't figure out how to use it. Uh... 
Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look that one up. Maybe someone knows. But that little journal in the bottom right-hand corner looks like it's got a scroll bar in it, which I can't seem to use. And I don't know why. Anyway, I'm sure it's dead simple and I'm just missing it. All right, so that's going to take us back where we've been already. However, we do seem to have a little uh, gem now, so let's see if we can do something with that. Oh, hang on. Uh, I've lost my bearings a bit. Might be Birmingham then. I've lost my bearings a bit. No. Who put me in charge? Come on. Why don't you put the kid in charge? Could have got a fast walking on it, couldn't we really? Never mind. Yeah, it does seem to... There you go. The camera seems to drop out sometimes when you pass through an area. I seem to click the right stick and it catches itself up. Now before we go doing that, I think we'll just do a quick... read of this little manual here. So we, this was a tattered journal we picked up. Actions and examine. So this small folio is torn in several places and blood has soaked into several of the sheets. One later entry is still legible, however. I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice and I've got my hands on a genuine Engwithan artifact. Fellow who had it said it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty nothing as far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins, but if he's right about this gem leading to the hidden treasure, then that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I'll head to the Calant Liz the, in the morning. Then it's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. There you are. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that what we're about to do here, and I missed this last night, as I say, I'm not going to destroy it, are we? is that that gem we picked up, which for some bizarre reason doesn't seem to be in our inventory. Yeah, there must be a quest. Yeah, I wonder where quest items are kept then. Figure out, figure out in a minute. Right. There we go. Place the gem in the eye socket. Brilliant, eh? A relief of a man's face gapes from the wall. The surroundings... So yeah, we've read all that. So we're going to place the gem in the socket. The chamber begins to rumble. Stray rocks dancing across the tile floor. Finally, a large section of wall gives way. Oh, bloody hell. Right, okay. Just ooze. Lesser black ooze. Yeah, that's okay. Minor Cloak of Protection, nice. I'll do a Mage. Amethyst and Adra. Yep, definitely did not get any of that last night. So there you go. Treasure! Alright, so now we need to find our... Out. She's a fast. Let's get our fast on. Holy hell. Uh, giant spider. Right, okay. Um, let's get... The 
this guy blinding the big spider, maybe. Let's get our lady of the night. Knocking it down. Oh, we're doing all right here. Yeah. Nice work, team. Nice work. Spear spider leg. That weapon, then. Oh, hello. Hang on, I'm going to take fast off for a second so we can. Bats as large as chickens are strung in the web. Ooh, shiny new sword. The rapier, one handed. 10 to 15 damage, accuracy 1. And something red that I didn't look at. Ooh, hello. <gasps> the helm. Now I've noticed there isn't a, a quip from pickup, which would have been handy, but what's R3 for then? If I click R3, what does it do to it? Goes to a chest somewhere. Hmm. Right, so if you hit R3, maybe it... We have homesteads, maybe, that have uh, chests, and we can fire them straight to the homestead, which is a bit of a cheat, but I'll let them off. Let me have a look at that. So we'll just take it for now, because I'm going to put it on him. Inventory. There he goes. I've only got two pieces of kit on at the minute. Jasper and Agate. It's not the name of Chris Martin's children. <laughs> or something like that. I've already done that. All right. What time are we on, people? Woo, nearly an hour and a half. Now, I know a lot happens when we walk out of this room. So, have a save. <clears throat> okay, let's see it through. So, Oh, no, maybe not. Yes, I'm sure. Now, do I post this up as a wanna, or do I do it in two parts? I think we do it as a wanna, don't we, really? Older robed man. Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus, an ancient structure of chiselled adra and metallic veins, ominous and looming like a silent observer. Standing motionless in their midst is what appears to be a human body, colourless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point you are well obscured from their view. The figure closest to the machine stands out among them. A thick grey beard frames uh, a thick grey beard frames a face otherwise hidden beneath a metallic mask his faded robes are embroidered with a runic language unlike anything you've ever seen and he wears a strange black headdress with two protrusion, protrusions can't even say it, protrusions that jut out like wings of some malevolent creature why is that worse so hard for me protrusions both binder bear witness and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favoured. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. 
May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw? Step forth and be assured of the great worth of your life's course. Dun dun dun. For an instant, the apparatus goes quiet and the air is still. Then all at once, it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision and you are knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land and, man, and pain wells into, your, into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into the black unconscious void. You open your eyes to, to a different place another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with adra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber is unweathered. At the far end of the great pillar of adra pierces the floor from below, its shimmering texture giving the illusions of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you have just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions. Pressing questions, troubling questions, questions that must be answered, or, or. At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick grey beard in a ceremonial robe, crowned with a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man, you are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. Uh oh. You awaken to find your melee as broken only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through the periphery, but when you turn to look, you can see no sign of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. The figures at the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced by cinders and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. Hayden and Celicia lie bloody on the uneven cobbles, their bodies twisted unnaturally in death. Oh no! You are alone and far from help. Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. So Gilded Veil is a place. A character is ready to level up. Well, that's a bonus. You know, now that everyone's dead, <laughs> we can do some leveling up. Do you want to level up now? Well, this can also be done by the general radio menu. Uh, yes, we will. So we can show it to you. So here we go. Straightforward level up screen. So I'm going to try and tap into a little bit of mechanics. I always end up spreading myself thin in these sort of things, you know. But I want, I think we'll take a, a mechanics which is going to help us do traps and such like. Yeah, so it gives us disarm difficulty one traps, pick difficulty one locks, and plus three trap accuracy. And in theory, we could go for two of those. So it tells you in the next column that it's two points to move up, which would take another two off of our five. We could go up to level five, uh, level four lore. Plus one fighter, plus two aristocrat equals three. Not quite sure what that's all about. It's only a point to do that because we started. Yeah, see, that's the the bonus, isn't it? You get a you get a head start on the one that you've done as your base unit skill, which we did at the beginning of the game. So it's only a point to go up to four, but then it starts getting more expensive. 
So it might be worth doing that as it happens. Survival gives us access level one camping bonuses. So that's to do with camping, yeah. Let's take one of those. Well, camping, I'll show you that in a second. So there must be extra bonuses to plus one fighter equals. Survival can also be used in, conversa oh, in conversations and scripted interactions that involve wilderness challenges or specialized information about nature. Seems reasonable. I wonder if we should take one of them and one of them. Athletics. Grant second wind. Fighter. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll spread them over it. Oh, we haven't got any stealth. Allows character of any class to attempt to avoid being seen or heard. It uses automatic. Yeah, I could use that. I'll tell you what, we'll do Laura on next level up. We'll take one stealth. It didn't give us anything that though, did it? Stealth zero. It's still zero. Yeah, we'll take it anyway. Right, okay. I'm happy with that. Four and law would have been nice, but we can get it on the next one. It's only a point. So we can now do... Difficulty 2 locks, because we might get some good loot out of that. And... You know what? I oh, know we can't. We need three points to go to the next one, don't you? Yeah, stick with that, stick with that. Go with your gut, Stephen. Ah, okay, we get another move here as well. Alright, we could go for an offensive manoeuvre. Weapon focus, adventurer, knight. Hold the line. Hold the line! <laughs> Fast runner. Alright, passive ability is nice. Plus one move speed, plus five defense when disengaging. Snake's reflexes. Plus ten reflex. The reflex is a lonely time. Weapon focus, noble. Plus six accuracy, dagger, rapier, mace, scepter, rod. Right, so the bow's no bloody good to him anyway. Could do with having a, a longer weapon, maybe like a rod or something on his second set. Um. I haven't actually tried any of the others. Last time I upgraded the knockdown, I think. So if we do bonus knockdown, it grants the fighter an additional use of knockdown per encounter. Modifies knockdown uses plus one. Knockdown two per encounter. I thought we had two already. Uh, the other's rapid recovery. Or did I? Maybe I took rapid recovery. Might have done, you know. Sneak attack. Enigma's charm. Able to temporarily charm an opponent. Uh, character's intense beliefs manifest in an aura. Outlander's frenzy. So, I think... I think rapid recovery boosts the fighter's hardiness, increasing the rate of his or her constant recovery. Modifies constant recovery. Yeah, I think I might take that, actually. It's not going to any harm, is it? Let's do it. So we had a point to spend there. We just spent it on that. And we're done. And we can pick the kit up that they've dropped, which is probably going to make him be... Uh, Carrying too much weight. Too much weight, yeah. Alright, so I think what I'll do is I'm going to show you the campfire. So what it's telling us to do is telling us to... No, cancel that. That's going to go back into the place. Uh... 
further up here, we're going to be able to go to the place we need to go. However, I want to show you the campfire before we do that. So, if I can remember where it is. There we go. So you notice we're missing a little bit of health and we seem to have some sort of half dim thing on us which is uh, affecting us. So, um, damage reduction. Camping allows your party members to restore lost health and receive a camping bonus. Camping will consume a camping supply. So we've got two of four at the moment. So you basically want to collect camping supplies as much as you can. We can, well, we can only collect four of the looks of it at the moment. Might be able to upgrade that later. I don't know what confirm does as opposed to just rest. Um, but we'll take damage reduction. We'll just confirm it. All oh, right. All oh, right. You can, okay, you can pick what bonus you're getting. So we, at the moment we can take damage reduction or heal multiplier, which is plus 20% healing received. But I don't see why I would take that when. Let's just, yeah, we'll take that. And party! There we go. So our health is back to full. And we seem to have full lightness on our character's face again as well. So it seems to be alright at the moment. So we're going to save it there. And we are going to call that the end of part one, because this is obviously where the journey starts proper, because we're now on our own again, and we've stripped our dead people naked, <laughs> taken all the stuff off them, which is exactly what you're meant to do in these sorts of games. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in a pillar of eternal blah. Pillars of eternity, I should say. Forgot the name of the game. It's been a massive playthrough that in terms of one episode, but it was it's a slow starter, so I wanted to do as much of it as possible to give you an idea of what's happening, what all the moves were, what the different menus are. So it's a proper old style RPG where you've got a party, you get turns, you're you know, interjecting with moves, which is all the stuff I loved in Dragon Age Origins. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing this a lot, along with Destiny 2 when it hits this week. And I will continue to record this. I think it's, I'll see how popular it is. But at the moment, I feel like I want to record it for you guys as I'm doing it and show off more of it. I think it's one that people will be reluctant to buy at full whack. I got it for 35 uh, 34.99 or something from Game Collection. So you can get it for not quite full whack. But I think a lot of people might wait for the price to dip a little bit. But it is getting great reviews. It's a fantastic... If you love this type of RPG, it's supposed to be really fantastic. As I say, it's been heavily, heavily compared to Baldur's Gate. Which I have never played. But it's a very similar ilk to that. So really, really looking forward to doing more of it. I shall have more for you extremely soon. And I shall see you guys soon. Take it easy. Bye.